Hi and welcome to phase 3 of fitting an E3D V6 hot end into a DaVinci 1.0 3D printer. Today we're going to take you through the process of opening up the cable harness inside the existing printer and laying in two cables for the 12 volts which run the coolant fan on the E3D V6. Don't worry about it, it's not complicated. Um, I think the uh, probably the, the, the most technical tool you need is a pair of cutters. So don't worry about that. You'll probably need a flat bladed screwdriver just to get the side off. And I'll show you how I lay in the cable and, and what cable I use. I just salvaged it from a, a piece of ethernet cable, to be honest, that's a, a, a computer network cable. I just cut, cut the ends off and pulled two of the strands out. So that's all I'm using for 12 volts. But uh, we'll cut to, the, um, cut to the other footage and we'll get started. Okay, so first of all, turn off your printer and unplug the power lead. There you go, now we can move on. Next, we take a T10 Torx bit in a screwdriver and we undo these two screws here. That's it. So we get our fingernail in there, in the back, just opens up. Now there's a clip at the top and you need to lift it slightly because there's tangs at the bottom and then you move it forwards and it comes off. What we're interested in now is this white connector because written on the circuit board on the pins for the white connector it says 12 volts and GND. Now I've worked out on the bottom side of this connector the yellow is plus 12 and the black is 0. So this is where we want our 12 supply to come from. Now also you'll see there's a hole with a lot of cables going through it. That's where we want to run our cable. And as you can see, I've already fed the cable through there and put a cable tie on there so it doesn't disappear through the hole. So, make sure you've got enough of that end so that you can run it up and solder the ends to those pins when we're ready. Right, now we'll see how to run the cable. Now we're gonna take this side off the printer and the easiest way to do that is to take a flat bladed screwdriver and just slide it in and lever up these clips. There we go. And that just comes down and it comes off. Next, it's probably best if we take this tray out of the way. So what we're going to need is our T10 Torx bit again. And we're going to need to take out these two screws here. There's a first one, and a second one, there you go, and then you have to slide the carriage forwards, take the tray, lift it up, and it comes straight out. Next, this hole here is the hole we fed the cable through, and this cable run here is where we want to put our cable. Now. You may look at the spiral wrap and think that looks pretty complicated, but it literally just, let's see if I can show you, it just unwinds from the cable run. You just twirl it round with your fingers and you just unwind it. It's very simple. There you go. So you unwind that section, run your cable in there and then wind it back on. It doesn't have to be super tight because it doesn't go anywhere. But be careful of all the sharp edges inside this printer. It's cheap, the metal works sharp, you will cut your hands. Now that should get you to the top. And we'll switch views and I'll show you how to go on from there. We're now looking in the top of the printer. And as you can probably see, my cables are coming up here. So they need to come along. You'll need to snip these two tie wraps, unwrap the cable harness, run your cable in, wrap the cable harness again, and put the two tie wraps back. Okay? Once we've done that, I'll show you the extruder. Okay, so we've made it all the way to the extruder. You can probably make out the, the heater connector, um, where the filament goes in. I haven't removed the filament because you don't need to to do this. So we've run our cable all the way around the harness. We've unwrapped, ran the cable and rewrapped. 
I took mine all the way to the very end of the spiral wrap, down there, where the plug goes into the board. That is literally the end of the cable harness. And I, I'm going to show you in a sec what you need to do to the cables if you want to leave the printer as is right now and connect the 12 volts up you cannot leave the cables like that so we'll just quickly switch and i'll show you what you need to do to the ends of the wire okay and now you can see there i've pulled my wires out of the harness and I've covered the end of each individual wire with some Kapton tape to insulate it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold it back and wrap it back into the harness until we're ready to put the 12 volt fan on. And that's pretty much it. We can move to the other end and I'll show you how to go about doing the soldering bit. But once we've wrapped this, that's the extruder end all done. Here we are back at the white connector end. And just to clarify, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 12 volts pin here. I'm going to solder the orange wire to that. And I don't know if you can quite make out there. It says GND, which is ground or zero volts. And the white wire is getting soldered to that. Now, there's absolutely no way I'm going to get in there with a the soldering iron. And you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So what I'll do is I'll solder it on and I'll show you the finish when, when it's done. So here we go, there's the masterpiece, the orange on the 12 and the white on the ground. It's not easy to get into that ground pin, you know, it's it's not a work of art, it's not a masterpiece, it just serves a purpose. I will just be leaving them like that, um, they're not going to go anywhere, I've made sure that the solder's not bridging any gaps, and it all looks good. So that's it, that's the soldering. And for all of the very observant of you... I haven't put the drip tray back in, so here it is now. You simply line this hook with that hole, and it holds its own weight. And then you take the two self-tapping T10 screws and put them back. One in the bottom hole. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. And the other one in the top hole. Uh, just do them finger tight. They don't need to be kind of like torqued in there or anything. Um, you may want to consider changing these screws because the heads in them just round off. That's entirely up to you. They're just self-tappers. So, there you go. You, you thought I forgot. <laughs> so, we just take the side. Make sure it's the right way around. It's got pegs on the bottom. They line up with the holes. Lean it over. Give it a shake. Push it back up. And just give it a tap all the way around. And that's the side back on. Easy. Now we're going to put the back cover back on. So we'll just take the screws out of there. Put them in there for safekeeping. Take your back cover. Slide the right hand side in first. It's got a bit of a juggle on it. Lift it up. Push them tabs in. Make sure the hook in the top goes down. And then it's back in place. Take your T10 Torx bit screwdriver. And put the two screws back in. Uh, you may want to change these screws as well. Because they're just self-tappers. And they, they do round off quite easily. But um, that's it. We shouldn't go back in there anymore. And we're pretty much all done. There you go. So there you go. It's as simple as that. Just to get a, a, a 12 volt live feed through. From the power supply in the DaVinci 1.0. Up to where the hot end's going to be. I mean... We don't have to connect the end of those cables up. We can leave the, the 12 volts soldered as long as you wrap a little bit of insulating tape around the other end at the hot end. And we can leave that kind of like just, just in there. That's not going to hurt anything at all. So if you wanted to undo this modification at any point, you would just un un undo those cables from the um, the hot end fan and just put some tape around and make sure they're not touching. And, and that's fine. You can just leave that in the harness. That's not going to do it. So that's it. That's uh, that, that's putting the 12 volt cables in. In the next phase, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sides off and we're going to take the carriage out. So that that's a little bit more serious. Um, you'll need some screwdrivers and, and stuff for that. But we'll get to that next time. So as usual, please like, comment and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.